Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and today I wanted to break down a couple of very basic fire and maneuver drills for inside of armor in the hope of keeping you alive that little bit longer. Now, just to give you some very, very quick background, um, as of April next year, uh, I will have served 16 years in the military. So I've got a little bit of knowledge when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I kind of just wanted to break it down. Now, armor is a very, very close to realistic uh, game. It's about as good as you're going to get when it comes to military shooters. It's not like Call of Duty. You're not going to be um, able to get away with the things that you can inside of a game like that. You, you kind of have to utilize tactics if you want to get the most out of the game. So what we're doing today is I've got a squad of four dudes here. It's a very basic fire team and they're going to come under contact from these guys just over here who are going to be suppressing us. So we're going to obviously do this in an open field to make it nice and simple and so you can clearly see what's going on. But the reality of this is obviously these guys right here are probably going to be like hiding in bushes and stuff like that. But the core tactic will remain the same. To simulate this, what we're going to do is we're going to showcase that our four guys are quite literally moving across, you know, an area in formation. Uh, realistically, you know, this guy should probably be a bit further back and you should be moving in this sort of uh, an arrow head style formation. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take contact. So as these guys move up, the op four over here are going to start shooting at us. Now, when they do that, the immediate drill is going to depend on what your primary mission is. Obviously, if you are looking to avoid contact, you're going to want to break contact as soon as possible. However, if you're there to neutralize the enemy, you're going to obviously want to go and kill the enemy. So as a result, we're, we're going to break down the very first thing you would do, which would be to return fire. That's going to be the same no matter what 90% of the time. Even if you're looking to break this contact and you don't want to stay and engage for an extended period of time, you're going to need to return fire in order to get the enemy's heads down. Now, because of this, this guy right here is going to come into his own. Uh, the LMG or the machine gunner, he is... I mean, he is built for this. He is designed to suppress the enemy. That's the point of his weapon. So... On the initial contact, everybody is going to pretty much move up into a line. If you're out in the open like this, you're obviously going to get prone. You're going to kneel. You're going to try and find a little bit of cover in your area. You know, if you've got a spoon, you're going to try and dig down and create a tiny little trench as soon as you can. But the reality is you just need to start throwing lead down range. Once you've got a load of bullets flying in the right direction, the squad lead is going to decide where you're going to go. Now, it, it normally needs to be a, a split second decision. You normally go into either advance, which 90% of the time is going to result in some serious injuries. Or alternatively, you're going to try and peel left or right. Now, in this situation, there's not a massive amount of cover either way. There's a little trench just over on this side, which may offer a bit of cover. Um, there's very little over here. Although, having said that, this is a hill. You know, there's a small hill. It's not going to provide a massive amount of cover. But as you can see, just by getting behind the hill, we're instantly sort of breaking line of sight with these guys. And the trees over here are going to provide us a reasonable amount of cover as well, should we wish to attack. Now, once everybody's up in the line and they're returning fire, let's just presume that for this occasion, we're going to peel left. If you're going to peel left, the two guys on the right are going to be the first ones to move. Now, when they move, they obviously can't go in front of these two because if they do that, they're just going to get shot in the ass. So instead, they're going to peel round the back and they're going to stack up to the left of the original two that we had here. These two are then going to start shooting and they're going to shoot as much as they can, obviously in the direction of the enemy. Then these two guys are going to peel around the back and you're going to keep doing this. And every time two are moving, the other two should be shooting in the general direction of the enemy. Hopefully by this point, you know, one of the guys has died and we'll get rid of him. But you never know. The point isn't to accurately kill the guys. It's to just get their heads down so you can keep moving and get out of dodge, essentially. Now, if you're trying to break contact, you're obviously going to do exactly that. You're going to break contact. You're all going to sort of uh, turn in your nice little group. And then from there, you're just going to pretty much get out of dodge as soon as you can. If, however, you're trying to kill the enemy 
um, which a lot of missions are going to be exactly that. Um, once you've broken rounds and you've managed to break that initial contact, you're then going to start looking at moving into something like this so you can then attack from the side. Now, obviously, in a four-man fire team, that's about as much as you're going to get. It's kind of difficult to do anything other than that. However, if you happen to be in an eight-man fire team, there are a few more options presented to you. The core concept is going to be exactly the same. Let me go ahead and just uh, group these guys to here. Uh, the core concept is going to be pretty much the same. But what we're going to do is we're going to simulate the fact that we've got an eight-man fire team. We're looking to push and kill the enemy. And in an ideal world, we're going to have a little bit of cover. So let's go ahead and grab just a small wall if we can. Nice little bit of cover. That's convenient. Extremely convenient. So from this position, we've got an eight-man fire team. We're moving up. We've taken contact. And we've got some cover in the area. Obviously, the first initial contact is going to provide the same thing. We're going to need to initially get some fire down. So everyone's going to push up. Everyone's going to start shooting in that direction. They're going to start suppressing. And then you're going to have to peel. So for this instance, we're going to peel right. Now, you can quite honestly, the closest guys are going to want to jump into cover. That is a natural sort of response. And whilst I'm not saying that you should stay out in the line of fire for an extended period of time, it should be on the external guys out on the left to realize that this situation is occurring and start peeling early. Now, these guys are going to get in a lot quicker than they would have done previously. But once you're all into cover, you can see we've naturally broken down into sort of two fire teams here. Now, this should be preset. You should already know who your fire teams are. If you're in an eight-man squad, you should um, be buddying up. So everybody should be partnered up. That way, if somebody goes down, it's easier to identify that somebody has, in fact, gone down. If these two guys are constantly sort of looking out for each other and holding each other's hands when this guy goes down this guy right here is aware that his buddy isn't there things like that along with certainly with ace adding in the ability to eat and drink now and there's no real way to assist somebody if they go down from dehydration yet these guys can look after each other you know if you're in a partnership you can say right what's your food and drink at you know have you have you topped it up recently no i haven't good idea thank you that's the point of the buddy-buddy system. On top of that, you can say, you know, if you're looking after each other, you can say your rifle's not got a mag in it since you've uh, last repacked your magazines. And this dude's going to go, oh, all right, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. I hadn't realized, rather than getting into a contact and not being able to shoot. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked a little bit. But now that we're up at the cover, we're going to start looking to return fire from a safer position. So... I'm just trying to get these boys to a bit of a position here, but they're going to start returning fire from the cover of this wall. Now, instantly, you can see that the, the advantage has swayed massively. Now, initially, the advantage was going to be with the Op 4. They had the drop on our team. Now that we've got the cover and the fighting position, we've got the ability for people to med inside of cover while cover is being provided, you know, while uh, a wall of gunfire is being put out in the direction of the enemy. While that's going on, the decision to make a move to flank will normally be made. So the four that are in cover and shooting are going to be staying put. And the other fire team are going to be pushing out of cover. And as you can see there, by moving backwards, we're still able to utilize a lot of this to get into a decent position. And from there, they are then going to move up and flank. Now, if they were prone here inside of this ditch, the enemy wouldn't even see them moving. But they would be able to get all the way up to the side where the enemy aren't looking. They'll be able to present a firing wall or a firing line, if you will. And then from there, they can advance up and kill the enemy. Now, that is a very, very basic sort of contact drill. It's not going into too much complexity. It's pretty basic, but it does require a few different things. It requires some forethought. It requires a little bit of knowledge as to what to do on contact and it also requires the planning and breaking down into fire teams but that is not overly complex to do and it's something that i would recommend that if you're in a squad of people if you're in a team of people that you start trying to run through these and just every time you get into contact just make sure that this kind of stuff 
sort of happens naturally. The more you get into contact and the more you try and do this, I mean, they're called battle drills for a reason. In the military, you are constantly just drilled. It is drilled into you. You just keep doing it and doing it and doing it to the point that you don't even have to think about it. That's genuinely the concept of it. When the shit starts flying and it all starts going completely wrong and you take a, an injury or, you know, one of these guys gets shot, you shouldn't have to think about what to do. It should just come naturally. And that's kind of the point of these drills. Now, at the end of the day, I'll be the first to admit this is a game. <laughs> this is just a game. So, you know, it, it depends how seriously you want to take it. But the reason these drills have been invented and, and utilized in the way that they have is because of the fact that they work. They are tried and tested, and we know for a fact that they work because the British military and militaries all over the world utilize these sorts of tactics for that very reason. Anyway, hopefully that sort of gives you a little bit of an overview of, you know, what to do with actions on contact. Obviously, this is a, a very sort of... Um, a simplified process and it's, it's a very simple way of me trying to explain it hopefully it comes across well and hopefully you understood what i'm trying to get at here anyway hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully that gives you um, some ideas and some pointers that you can take away to your own individual squads or alternatively if you want to come and try and practice this on my server feel free um we're still we've got a group of people that are still learning and we're still practicing this kind of stuff um and it's something i'd like to put into practice a little bit more but if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe for pretty much anything tactical when it comes to games. I really enjoy the tactical genre, specifically armor at the minute. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And until next time, ladies and gents, stay reckless and relentless.